Hi everyone, it's Leela from Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be two tumblers, this 30 ounce tumbler and this 20 ounce skinny tumbler. Before I show you the video, I just wanted to let y'all know that during the process of making these tumblers, I did have a lot of hiccups. Um, one main reason is because this was my first time trying this specific design. So uh, I decided to publish the video anyways, despite the hiccups. And I wanted to show you all the hiccups and show you how I kind of uh, continued on with a tumbler. And I learned from one tumbler to create a better looking tumbler, uh, which is the 20 ounce skinny. So this video kind of shows y'all that just because you get discouraged, just because you make a tumbler you may not like, um, you can always push through it and just learn from your little mistakes and keep crafting because at, at the end of the day, um, we do this, we enjoy doing this. So just have fun with it and kind of create your own. And if you end up not uh, making the tumbler that you visioned like these two that you see, you still may come up with uh, something really, really beautiful or somebody else might like it. And if you are selling your tumblers, then somebody might adore a tumbler that you just can't stand. So keep your confidence up, keep crafting, and don't be discouraged and just push through all these little hiccups. And like always, I will be posting all of my materials in my description below, including the links where I purchased the materials. Now let's jump into this video. Today's video is going to be an acrylic paint video and I am using uh, Arteza acrylic paint. I will be doing one design on two tumblers. I'm going to be doing two different colored theme tumblers, but the designs are going to be the same. I just want to show you all, all the uh, colors that Arteza uh, offers with the, their acrylic paints. If you do end up liking this video and the colors that I use, there will be links in my description below on where to purchase these Arteza colors. For my first tumbler, I'm going to be using colors from the eight metallic colors. And then with my second tumbler, I'm going to be using the iridescent colors. All of Arteza's uh, colors and um, materials that they offer, you can always view the colors that they have inside of the box on the outside of the box. So I really like that and it keeps you really organized. You don't have to keep opening the box to see which colors are in the box. And you can always package them right back inside their original packaging. And these are really uh, small and compact, so you can store them easily in your craft room. And like with all my videos, all of my materials and the links to my materials will be listed in my description below, including where to purchase these Arteza paints. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So the colors that I want to choose for this tumbler is going to be a fall theme. So I'm going to remove this, the silver, the pearl white, and the pearl space gray. So it uh, leaves me left over with all these colors. Um, it's going to be pearl marmalade, Aztec gold, pearl deep brown. This is my favorite. Gold and then bronze. All these paints do come sealed, so I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the top and then unseal the paints. The finish is glossy, so these are not matte, so the pearl is really going to pop and it's going to pop extra with that epoxy. I will be working with a 30 ounce stainless steel tumbler. For my very first step of this tumbler, I sanded it down with 180 grit sanding paper. After I sanded it, I then sprayed it down with 91% alcohol. As long as your alcohol is at least 91%, that is okay. You can spray it down with 99% The reason why you spray it down with alcohol is to remove any oils uh, that may have transferred on the tumbler from your skin. After sanding my tumbler down, I went ahead and I spray painted it with Colonial Red by Rust-Oleum, and that's my base coat. So I just sprayed one coat on it with the Colonial Red. It is satin finish. And now it uh, has been sitting for about 25 minutes. So now I'm ready to start with the acrylic design. So for the first uh, part of the acrylic paint step, it's going to be separating all of the paints. So I am using five paints. So I have five cups and you're going to water down your paints. So I'm just going to squeeze in the paints and the, and the cups separately. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water. And I don't know if you guys can pick up this, but the metallic on these colors are real. These colors are so, so pretty. I love that metallic glossy shine. 
Um, I'm just squirting or squeezing as much paint in here as I think is necessary. So I have three ounce Dixie cups and I'm filling it up about um, probably a third of the way. So, um, and then I'm going to take my, my water. It's just room temperature water. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my tumbler or to the, the cups. So just a drop because I'd rather add too little water than too much. Oops, that was a lot. So I'm gonna have to have, have a lot of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add more gold to that. I believe that one was gold, so I'll add more gold to that. And then once you have the water added, you're then going to stir. If you do have a heavy hand like me, what I usually do is I usually poke a hole inside of this uh, top of the tumbler sorry, uh, top of the lid, and then I kind of just squeeze it in and then it doesn't flow out as quickly. It kind of stops my heavy hand. So now I'm going to stir all the acrylic paint. You can break your popsicle sticks in half or you can keep them whole, however you want to do it. So since this is my first time doing this technique, I'm kind of paranoid that I'm not going to have enough paint. So I'm going to add more paint and then more water. The consistency that you want is a drip consistency. So just like my dirty pour that I did with Arteza, you want to be able to lift your popsicle stick out from your tumbler or from the Dixie cup and you want a nice drip. So once I get that nice consistency, I'm going to show y'all and hold it up so y'all can see what I'm uh, talking about. Okay, so I have all of my paints mixed with water. If you don't want to use water and you have a paint thinner that you prefer, go ahead and use that. You just want to kind of um, thin the paint out. And I said that you need a drip, but these paints are rather thick, which is a good thing. Um, so I'm actually going to be pouring this on a tumbler. So you want a steady pour. So if you tip your um, your Dixie cup and it doesn't pour, it doesn't flow the way that this is flowing, I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, if it's not flowing, then kind of add a little bit more water uh, to it. And if you make it too watery, which I don't really think you can because I've added a lot of water to these, um, just add more paint to it. So you see that, that pour that it's pouring? You want that flow because you're gonna be pouring this on the tumbler. And I have three ounce Dixie cups and they're about halfway full, maybe a little bit more than half. Um, if I need more, I'll just go ahead and mix more off camera and then I'll come right back to the tutorial. So now for the next step is I'm gonna apply these paints on my tumbler. All right, y'all, so I have my tumbler set up, my 30 ounce tumbler, it's spray painted, my spray paint is dry. Now I'm going to apply these paints. Again, this is my first time doing this tumbler, so please bear with me if I do make any mistakes. Uh, I wanna get through it with y'all. So I'm going to start with my Pearl Deep Brown, and I'm going to squeeze the Dixie Cup. These Dixie Cups are not reusable, so I'm. it's okay if you squeeze it, because I want kind of a pointy tip. So I want this pointy tip because I'm going to just pour this on the tumbler uh, the way that it's flowing. So I'm just going to diagonally pour this on the tumbler. If it's not a straight line, that's okay. If you want to pour it and just keep going around, if you want to do little zigzags, you'll understand why it doesn't matter, but I'm just going to do lines for now because I like to keep it a little simple. And you see what I did? I didn't even do a, a diagonal line. I did an up and down line, which is okay. So I'm going to have to stand up for this. I did an up and down line. That's fine. And then I'm just going to pour. I'm trying to do it to get in the camera, but still be able to, to achieve the, um, the overall look. So you could see that it's thick now, it's fine. I'm just pouring and I'm trying to go diagonal for y'all, trying to do it and still get it inside the camera. So now I'm going to pour my next line. Uh, I believe this one is the bronze. Maybe it's the Aztec gold. Uh, so I'm just going to do that pour again. I'm going to, I'm gonna have to change the tumbler my way. 
because I won't be able to do it without and then start from the bottom. And just go ahead and cross over if you want because I started kind of the opposite way. So you see how thick that paint is? I love that paint. All right, so I'm kind of just dragging it on the tumbler and I'm just pouring it wherever it lands. Does not look good, that's okay. We're up to a great start. So now I'm going to take my next color and then again, make that little spout there and just kind of put it on the tumbler anywhere. And if it drips down and makes a huge mess, that's okay. Everybody knows I'm heavy handed and I'm a messy crafter. So that's fine. And I'm kind of, I'm going to smush them on the bottom. And now for my next color, this is Aztec gold. This is going to really pop on here. I really water this one down. So I'm going to put this on here. It looks like a, like a metallic mustard. I like that color. And then my next one is going to be the gold. And again, this is not looking good, but we'll see how it turns out in the end. And I'm just filling in some spaces wherever I want to fill it. And you can see it's swirling. That's fine. I want to come in with more of this color. I like this copper color here and just kind of put that wherever. All right. So now for my next step, I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to dampen the paper towel. So if you have a spray bottle, I highly suggest uh, spraying this. I can't find my spray bottle, so I'm just going to wet it and then fold it and put the wet part on the folded part. And then I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm just going to kind of hold it and then move in a diagonal angle on the tumbler. So I'm kind of smearing that tumbler and I'm making kind of a wave effect. And um, if y'all don't know, these paints are water-based, which is why I'm not wearing gloves. I don't want to waste my gloves. So I am just getting it on my hands and then I can just easily wash it off when I'm finished. So I'm wetting the paper towel again and then I'm starting from the top and I'm just smearing that around the tumbler and I'm letting it go at a, at a diagonal angle. And you can see that kind of uh, swirl effect happening there. And then you can fold it and then use that same paper towel and start again. And I'm applying just a little bit of pressure and I'm just kind of smearing it and swirling it to have those colors really swirl around the tumbler. And then I'm going to grab another paper towel and then just repeat that process until my little heart is happy. So I'm going to try to focus on the areas where I haven't smeared it. I'm trying to focus on making this diagonal to have that swirl. It's really, really cool because it adds like some depth to the tumbler. Whenever you uh, mix these colors, it kind of looks 3D like. Bear with me guys, it's gonna look cute at the end. <laughs> and if it doesn't, we can all fill together. Okay, I'm back and while I was away, I did find my spray bottle. So I'm going to spray this tumbler. It's a lot easier than pouring water on it or spray this paper towel. I replace every word with tumbler if I don't know it, if y'all can hear that. And then I'm still going to scrape around that tumbler and I'm making that swirl effect. Again, if you are telling me that I use too much ink or too much paint, you are right. <laughs> I use too much paint on this, but I wanted to show y'all how this was for the first time. So my next tumbler, I just learned. So I'm just gonna scrape this bottom. I'm just, all I did was kind of swoop the bottom just to make it look kind of, kind of cool. And what you could do on the bottom is you could take your paper towel, kind of wet it, 
and then kind of swirl in there. You can make little swirls if you want. You can kind of clean it up, clean up the edges. And you see that red peeking through? I really like how the red spray paint is peeking through there. I just need to clean this up just a little bit more. And then once I am done with that, I'll just let it spin until it's dry. So I hope you guys get the overall concept of what I'm attempting. I hope it looks pretty cool on the camera. You can see that, that metallic really popping. I kind of like the red peeking through up here to make that swirl. Again, I use way too much paint. I'm so heavy handed with stuff. So once you're satisfied and once you have your tumbler as smooth as you think you want it or as smooth as, smooth as you can get it, you are finished with this and you just let it spin. Okay, so a little tip that I've learned is don't add too much water because it will smear together like so. Don't add too little water because it will scrape up the paint. And um, make sure you don't flow it too much. So there's actually an act to this. So make whenever I say flow too much, make sure you're not mixing it too much because the more you paper towel it, the more the color smear and the more it makes it looks like one tumbler. So I'm gonna try to finish this and clean it up and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next tumbler. And hopefully that one's gonna look a little better than this one. All right, so for my next tumbler, I'm gonna make it more bright. I'm gonna mix the colors or make the co colors kind of pop more, at least attempt to. So I have my Arteza 10 acrylic colors uh, pack. Uh, sorry, you can't see it on the screen. But out of the 10 colors, I'm going to be using Glowing Peach, uh, Shocking Lime Green, Electric Plum Purple, and then the Playful Pink. This looks like, um, on the camera, it looks like white, but it has a nice shimmer of pink on here. I don't know if you guys can tell. Uh, all of these colors are actually surprisingly uh, like metallic or like color shifting. So I'm really excited to add these to a tumbler. You could see like the purple, like it's not just purple. It has like some holographic hues to it, kind of color shifting. So we'll see how this uh, this uh, responds to this tumbler. So I'm going to get these paints all ready. I'm gonna put them in separate Dixie cups and then add the water to dilute them. And then I'll be right back. Before I add the paint to the tumbler, I do want to let you know that I did do the same process to this tumbler. I sanded it, uh, I applied 91% alcohol to remove any possible oils, and then I spray painted with Rust-Oleum Winter Gray Spray Paint. All the materials will be listed in my description below like mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's try this again on a different tumbler. We've learned some things. What have I learned? Uh, I've learned to use less paint than more paint. Um, now, instead of pouring the tumbler or pouring the paints on the tumbler, I'm going to add the paints with a popsicle stick. I feel more comfortable that way. And I feel like at an angle, I can work better with that at like an angle. And you could see this beautiful blue I did not mention earlier, but it's fairy tale blue. And in the bottle, it looks like it's just navy blue, but whenever it's on this tumbler, it's like an iridescent, like purple bluish it's like kind of like a mermaid color i'm really really liking uh this this color a lot as you can tell i'm uh, applying a lot of paint to it and now i'm going to work with my purple which is again the electric plum purple all of the colors that i'll be using will be posted in my description like i keep mentioning so if you don't catch any color or certain material don't worry go to my description below and um I have the, the materials listed there. So now I have my uh, purple added 
and I love these colors already. I just want to stop with this tutorial now and just make the tumbler like so. And now I'm going to have uh, the pink added, which is the glowing peach. Ooh, I really like, now I know why it's called peach. It's that nice iridescent peachy pink. This is really, really gorgeous. I'm really, really digging these colors. So this is, this is just being added randomly. I'm not um, doing anything specific. I'm just making a big old mess. So, um, so if yours looks kind of messy like mine, that's fine. We're gonna get through this together. I'm going in with the green, which is a shocking lime green. I really, really love this color combination. It takes me back to my teenage years. So I'm just going to diagonally add this, I'm not pouring. The last tumbler I learned, I used way too much epoxy, or excuse me, way too much ink uh, paints on the tumbler. And uh, you can always add more. I guess you could take off more, but it was harder for me to take more off than add more. I really like the gray background with this tumbler. It's really, really popping these colors. And now I'm going to go in with that uh, playful paint. And you can see as it's applied to the tumbler, it is more of that, it's kind of like a pearl. It's more of like a pearl than, uh, than white. So I could see why the name is Playful Pink. And I'm just dabbing the bottom of the tumbler. I always kind of just make that however. I don't really focus too much on the bottom making it perfect. I know a lot of people add logos to their bottom. All right, so now that that part's over, now the hard part <laughs> is whenever you dampen or moisten that um, paper towel, you spray it and then you kind of just let it do its thing. So uh, let's go ahead and get the paper towels and then uh, I'll come back to y'all. All right, so I have my paper towel. I dampened it with my um, spray bottle and now I'm just going to go along the tumbler at a diagonal angle from the top to the bottom, applying very, very little pressure and making that swirl. I'm going to fold the paper towel, kind of fold it in dampen that part again, and then repeat that process. So I'm gonna start at a different part, and then kind of make that swirl once again, kind of go along with that last swirl that I did. I'm not applying that much pressure because I wanna keep those colors kind of individual, but still kind of smear if that makes sense. So I don't wanna mix those colors so much. I just wanna kind of swirl them without really mixing them. So let's go in here and let's kind of come down here. And the reason, uh, I don't know if I mentioned before why you apply water is to create that kind of swirl effect. If you don't apply water, then all it does is take the paint off and you can't see that swirl. So you can't have that nice smooth swirl. If you add too much water, then you mix all the colors together and you won't have that nice colorful tumbler. So again, let's take my paper towel again and we're just repeating this process until our little hearts are happy. So I guess technically until my little heart is happy. So I'm just trying to take off any place that isn't smeared that's the only word I can think that isn't kind of mixed together. And I'm just mixing it. Now I really like how this one's turning out. This one might just be my personal tumbler. So you see what happens. You try a tumbler once, doesn't really work out. And then you do it again and you end up loving it. So don't be discouraged whenever you do a tumbler and you don't like the final result. Try it again, change your techniques, learn from what you did and create something even more beautiful the next time. So I know that this is really wasting paper towels, but tumblers over everything, right? So now I kind of did my swirl kind of left and right and not swirl. So I'm gonna keep that in mind and kind of remember that. So whenever I do my other swirl, I can kind of overlap that kind of interfere with that swirl and bring it down. So you see how I did that? 
I'm kind of crossing over that swirl. And now I have a little bit more down here. Now you don't wanna do this too much because what happened last time? I smeared all of those colors together. And honestly, I think those colors were too similar that it wasn't enough to separate them. So I think that was another problem I was running into. And then I'm taking that smear, <laughs> I'm taking that part of the paper towel and I'm just wiping it on the bottom just to fill it in just a little bit. And then I think I'm just gonna do a little bit there. And I really, really like how this is turning out. So I'm almost finished with this. And what I believe you can try is if you're seeing too much of one color on a certain spot, go ahead and add, like let's say I'm seeing too much green on the spot and I just want a little bit more purple. I can add a little bit purple and then just kind of repeat that process and kind of smear it. Or like right here, I don't have a lot of paint here. So I'm going to take my purple and kind of add some with my popsicle stick at that same diagonal uh, way that I added it in the beginning. I'm kind of adding that right there. Let me add this beautiful blue because I really like that blue. That blue really surprised me. Okay, so let me add that here. And then let's go ahead and just add all the colors, why don't we? Okay, and then I have my paper towel kind of wet there. And then I'm kind of swirling it the best way I can and kind of pushing up so I can really take that, uh, take that swirl down there. See how it's swirling there? Now you don't wanna move your hand. You wanna move your hand as little as possible. So whenever you swirl, you're trying to keep that clean, that clean touch there. It's actually a lot harder than what it looked and what I thought it would be, but it's still coming out very, very pretty. So you're just kind of swooping that. You're kind of making that swirl like so. And you'll get the hang of it. Just make sure you're, you're keeping that paper towel kind of, kind of damp, not too wet, but just enough to create that nice swirl. And however you want to grip your hands or grip the paper towel, go ahead and do so. And I see a little spot on mine. I know you guys are probably like, stop touching it, but I see this little bare spot. I wanna kinda create a swirl there, so I'm gonna let it roll, let that thing spin, and then take this, and I remember where that bare spot was right there, and then just kinda swirl that down. Hey guys, I'm back with my tumblers. They've been spinning on the cup turner for a couple hours now. I literally just turned them off right before I started recording. So uh, there are a little bit of spots around both tumblers that are still a little wet. So um, I did stick my finger right here and then it's kind of smudged it, so that's fine. Um, so I'm going to let them air dry for another couple hours. Um, so total drying time is about four to five hours. Once they're completely dry, we'll move on to the next step. Hey guys, I'm back with both tumblers and you can see how they turned out. Again, a little different, but I hope you guys get the idea of how to achieve this. I really, really like how um, this one turned out, let me show you a little closer. I think this one turned out really, really cute. A nice unicorn or even a mermaid decal will look really, really uh, cute on this tumbler. So I just want to put enough epoxy on this tumbler to really seal in the designs. I don't want to make a, a thick, thick coat, so I'm going to epoxy them both. After I epoxy, let the epoxy completely cure for at least 24 hours, apply my decal, and then epoxy over the decal with a little bit more epoxy. So for my 30 ounce, I'll probably use about 20 to 30 milliliters of epoxy. And then for this 20 ounce, I'll probably use about 15 to 20 milliliters of epoxy. Typically my rule of thumb, whenever I seal my design with my epoxy, is I typically use the amount of milliliters of epoxy 
that's equivalent to the amount of ounces of my tumbler. So for example, this is a 20 ounce tumbler. I'm going to use about 15 to 20 milliliters of epoxy. This is a 30 ounce tumbler, so I'm going to be using about 25 to 30 milliliters of epoxy. So that's kind of how I measure my epoxy whenever I'm just sealing in the design. And if I use a little bit less than that, that's fine, or a little bit more, I kind of just use that as a general point to go off of whenever I measure it. I have mixed my epoxy off camera. If you want to know how to mix epoxy properly, go ahead and check out my description. I do have my video link to help you out with that. And I'm now going to apply my epoxy to my tumblers. Just like any other tumbler that you'll apply your epoxy to, it's going to be the same. You just want a very thin coat of epoxy on these tumblers. Again, like I said, this is just to seal the tumblers, the designs to the tumbler. This is not to, to finish the tumbler up. This is just so I can seal this so the epoxy can have all this design locked in. You cannot add your decal to your tumbler before you epoxy. The reason why we epoxy before we add the decal is because when you add that decal and if you uh, add the transfer tape to this uh, tumbler with just the paint, the transfer tape will most likely tear up this paint and it's going to ruin your design and ruin your tumbler. So it's easier for in the long run just to add the epoxy, a very thin coat of epoxy, than your decal. Both of my tumblers are epoxied and you can see how different they look, at least in person, they look a lot different. These colors really do pop underneath the epoxy. Uh, once you have epoxy your tumbler, you're now going to allow your tumbler to spin on the turner for about eight to 12 hours. After you've allowed your tumbler to spin on the turner for eight to 12 hours, you're then going to turn off your cup turners and let your tumblers air cure or air dry for another 12 hours. A total drying or curing time of 24 hours. Before I decal my tumblers, I always make sure that I allow my tumbler to be completely air dried or air cured for at least 24 hours. That way I know there is no way the tumblers are not dry. So if your tumblers are still sticky or wet after 24 hours, then you have mixed your epoxy incorrectly. Both of my tumblers are completely dried. They've been on the turner and I let them air dry or air cure for at least 24 hours. You can see how beautiful this um, metallic purple, pink, yellow, green tumbler turned out. I really, really like this one. Um, and this one actually didn't turn out too bad either. Uh, once I put a decal on this, I think it's going to be uh, really, really pretty. Now, if you remember, I put a lot of acrylic paint on this one. So there's some acrylic paint sticking up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sand this with 220 grit sanding block before I apply the decal. So I'm going to sand it, apply my decal, and then put a last layer of epoxy over here. And then that's going to kind of hide uh, these little blemishes that I have poking up through the epoxy. I'm finished adding the decal to my tumblers. Uh, I found a cheetah print um, print that I liked and I added it to this red and gold one. I think it turned out really well. And then I just found a unicorn uh, decal and I added it to the purple one. 
So I think these turned out really, really nice and I think they're really, really pretty. So now that I have the decal on, I'm now going to epoxy my tumblers. So I'm going to epoxy uh, my 30 ounce and then my 20 ounce skinny. I'm going to be using about 30 to 35 milliliters of epoxy to really lock in that decal. And then for my 20 ounce skinny, I'm going to be using about 25 milliliters of epoxy. So um, that's total milliliters. That's not 25 part A, 25 part B. That's uh, total milliliters of epoxy on each tumbler. After I epoxy each tumbler, I will then let it spin on my cup turner for about four to six hours. After about four to six hours, uh, I will then turn off my cup turner and I'll let my tumbler air dry or air cure. And after 24 hours, my tumblers are completely finished. If you do want any help or assistance on how to epoxy a tumbler correctly or properly, need any tips, I will be posting my beginner's video in my description below. So go ahead and check that out. I'll also be posting a video in my description below, a link to a video to clean up the rim and the inside of your tumbler. So I know a lot of people message me and they ask me how to clean up that rim. I will be posting that video in my description. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you learned from my mistakes and I hope you had a fun time watching it, a fun little ride. Sometimes um, I don't do my tumblers as perfectly as I want them to. Sometimes it's just an adventure and that's what I love about crafting and what I love about making tumblers. So just have fun with it and uh, you'll create something beautiful. And if you don't, just learn for your next tumbler. So thank you for watching my video. And if you did like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you do want to see more tumbler and craft videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again and I'll see y'all next time.